people always try to uh, tell me I'm guilty of polluting. I don't feel guilty. That's the wrong impression most of the people have. I'm not guilty. I always said I am not guilty of anything. I don't want to show you the office. That's a, a messy place. Nobody has been in there and everything has been ripped, uh, ripped apart, you know. So. Does it bother you yourself to go into the office? Yes, it bothers me myself because it used to be a place, a very busy place. It was, everything was neat and clean and uh, now it's a hell of a mess. You know, um, I mean, I look around here um, and I see it's not the way it was. But you're blaming that all on the MOE. Of course. Do you take any blame yourself for anything that has happened what? here? For what? Tell me what? I run a, a real nice business here. It was a clean business. The only thing I'm charged is with discharging some, some solvent into the natural environment. That's the only thing I'm charged with. Here. Uh, Mr. Arkin, can we talk to you for a second? You've expressed some strong feelings about uh, having this done today. Obviously, it doesn't. Um, <clears throat> are you? Did you come in here expecting it to be over and done? I just want to have the thing settled once and for all. It has gone on for two and a half years, and it took a hell of a big chunk out of my life. And at that, day, at that stage of my life, I can't afford that any longer. It's as simple as that. So you are remorseful? Remorseful? I don't comment on that. No comment at all? No. An interesting thing happened to me when I came to Canada. Within only a few months, I had the impression everybody at one or another time goes to jail in this country because everything you touch is practically a criminal offense or an offense of some kind. I want to tell you a little story. A friend of mine which worked with me, that is 1954, every Saturday he went to Hamilton to a German dance in the Fisher Hotel at that time. That one Saturday night or Sunday morning at 2 o'clock he came back. And I want to remind you, 1954, Number six highway from Hamilton to Guelph. It was dark like hell, you know, real black. He had to go for a leak. He stopped his car, no cars around. He had his leak, did want to go into the car. Here comes another car driving toward him, and it was an OPP car. The officer got out, asked him what you do here. He said, I just had a leak. The officer said, that is indecent exposure. And he gave him a citation. He had to, court, had to go to court for that. When he was in front of the judge, the judge said, listen, next time, piss in your pants. It costs only 75 cents to dry clean them. <laughs> We submitted some uh, letters to you from uh, Philip about the intent of buying one in color. And I believe on that uh, intent it was uh, also mentioned that the sale will be gone through by September the 1st. Well, unfortunately, Your Worship, it hasn't gone through. I was extremely busy and I was able to uh, interest a third party, which we negotiate now. That is uh, public the, for the first time right now. They're Americans, and uh, on the 9th of September, we have the second meeting, and, and at this time, I uh, would like, Your Worship, 
if any sentencing is going to be done, if it could be done past September the 9th, because I have to attend that meeting. Now, now my concern, Your Honor, is, is that this is exactly why the Crown had made a deadline, because uh, enough is enough. If the sale goes through tomorrow, Your Honor, my position is that the original agreement of, uh, or, or, or concession by Mr. Argentin to the Crown submission of three months, that, that, that I am no longer bound by that. I frankly don't care anymore if the sale were to go through tomorrow, because at this stage, this community has waited... I don't know why Mr. Berger talks when he is not concerned about or doesn't care anymore. I'll just let Mr. Berger finish what he's saying. I, I haven't seen the name of the company. I haven't seen any documents. You won't. And, and I am not prepared to proceed on that basis, Your Honor. Uh, I'm not even prepared to, uh, uh, to concede that this matter should go over even for a day, an hour, ten minutes. I don't even want to phone anybody. On, on, on this kind of information, in my respectful submission, this is just a further indication of the level to which Mr. Argentin is treating this very serious matter. I think um, in, in view of what's been indicated, and I understand your reluctance, Mr. Berger, to, uh, to recess even for a few moments. However, Mr. Argentin is not represented by counsel, and I think that he should be given some consideration in view of that. There has to be, as you've indicated, some finality to the matter, and it was put over to today's date with the indication that this would, not in fact, be the final date. You will recess for 20 minutes. All right. But as of this moment, I really don't give a shit, you know? You don't care at all? I don't give a shit if the company is ever going to be sold. Listen. The MOE has put me down, and I have new evidence, which I just got last night. There was a multinational corporation which did want to come to my aid in every respect, with financial and all kinds of other help. And they approached the MOE, and the MOE told them, let it die, don't bother. That shows you right then and there. The order which I got was not an order to comply with. That was an order to get me out of business. So how are you going to handle it right now? What are you going to do at this point? I mean, the way it Nothing. looks... Nothing. I let Her Worship sentence me to whatever she feels the sentence is going to be. After I had my say. You know, it's simple as that. What uh, Mr. Argentin has done has been to attempt to pass this problem on to others. First, to pass it on to Phillips and say, uh, well, I found a responsible person to look after this problem. And uh, if they're prepared to buy the company, then the problem will be looked after. Now that that doesn't seem to be working out, he has now told this court that he's found yet another responsible person to look after this problem and, and hope that they will deal with it. My respectful submission, the only responsible person that this court need concern themselves with is Mr. Argentin. This man isn't penniless. He could be offering some effort. He's offering none. But what Mr. Argentin's telling you is he doesn't even want to spend a nickel of his own money to even put drums that are leaking into other drums to see to it that there's adequate stormwater containment on the property on an ongoing basis to determine whether or not this contamination can at least be contained in the short term um, so that it doesn't pose a, a danger to the public. He's not even prepared to do that. Your Worship. I'll allow you to say something further. I don't wish this to turn into an argument between you and Mr. Berger. I will, however, allow you okay, to make a comment if you wish. <clears throat> By Mr. Berger's submission today, he makes me like I was the one which polluted the Elmira water, which is not so. I admit I did do some contamination of the upper layer of the aqua third. There is nothing going into any river or any place, and nobody will be harmed. My action, whatever the contamination is, will harm nobody, and that is very important. 
Now, Mr. Argentin knew what the parameters of his certificate of approval were, that he was only allowed to have 613 cubic meters of waste. And what he did was he expanded his business to way beyond that in order to meet a market demand. The potential impact on the environment is almost unimaginable. Is three months with the prospect that one is going to be able to be found out and, and prosecuted successfully an adequate deterrent for a person that engages in this kind of dangerous business? In my respectful submission, it isn't. And in my submission, the only effective deterrent to this type of activity is a jail term that is going to be meaningful in all the circumstances. Maybe the Lord had that in mind for me all along. Maybe I got too big for my britches and he thought, well, I have to teach the guy a lesson. I don't know. Um, Do you believe that? No, I don't believe that at all. But uh, I mean, it's speculation. <clears throat> in a number of respects, Mr. Argenton acted in defiance of the requirements of the certificate of approval, which had been granted to Barnacolor Chemical. Such violations are, in effect, a breach of trust on the part of a person to whom such a certificate has been granted, and as such, jail terms are an appropriate penalty to ensure compliance with the law by both the person being sentenced and society in general. There is some indication of deliberateness, or at least recklessness, on the part of Mr. Argenton. He was involved in a hands-on capacity with the company, and yet he permitted the upkeep of the site to deteriorate and the operations to continue in such a manner as to permit the discharge of pollutants from the site. Generally, it is accepted that the mere fact that an accused has entered a guilty plea is indicative of the fact that he is remorseful. Mr. Argenton has, during the course of this guilty plea, made it known to the court that his actions in pleading guilty are not, to a large extent, motivated by remorse, but rather by a desire, in his own words, to get it over with and get on with his life. It appears, then, that his guilty plea does not reflect an attitude of remorse on the part of his, the defendant. Since the company has not been sold, the cost of abatement and restoration of the site may well fall upon the shoulders of the taxpayers of this province. The penalty which this court imposes must impress upon the parties involved in such an enterprise that the courts and society in general expect and demand that the actions of such businesses must be environmentally responsible and that only the most rigid adherence to environmental standards, guidelines, and orders will be tolerated. Even in the most difficult of times, environmental concerns must not be sacrificed. Stand, Mr. Argenton, please. Do you stand, sir? In view of this fa these factors, Mr. Argenton, in respect of the amended charge pursuant to Section 13, subsection 1 of the Environmental Protection Act, you are hereby sentenced to a jail term of eight months, such sentence to commence on Thursday, September the 10th at 9 a.m., at which time you are to report to the Waterloo Detention Center in Cambridge to commence the serving of that sentence. Is there anything further? No, thank you. Thank you. All right. Start set, adjourned. I can't believe it, Hutch. I can't believe it. Right there. We never talked about eight months at any point. No. no. I didn't realize it, but I really got myself into it. Now, after you're in for a month, 
just start to settle down, honey. You realize uh, you're incarcerated here. Your freedom is uh, cut. You can't uh, do what you want to do. It's uh, nothing you can do about it. That's the, the damn thing. It's uh, you're in there. You have to. You have to uh, hang around. And that's what you actually do. Just hang around, do nothing. And there's not a damn thing you can do about it. Huh? I am not a two-faced guy. No way do I show something which is show to somebody, and I don't feel like that. Huh? I don't feel remorse. What the hell? What did I do? I haven't done a fucking thing, really. Why would I be rehabilitated? I haven't done anything to be to uh, rehabilitate myself for. Uh, Besides, I'm retiring, <laughs> I'm out of business, so, you know. So nothing changes, really, in the end? Nothing changes, not a damn thing, no. Gentlemen, thank you. See you again. Okay, take okay, care. Yeah. Okay. Bye. See you. Yeah? In back to five. No, two, two, okay. Go ahead. Okay.